Hi everybody, this is Todd Frazy again, and this is a video tutorial to prepare the cam for the part TCOS01. So we're going to start off in design mode, and we're going to open up our model. So your part should look something like this. It's a series of threaded holes and a slot two slots on one side. Now, all the features on the dash one configuration can be machined from one side. So on this approach, we're going to assume we have extra material on the outsides that we can clamp to, or perhaps we hold this part down with another means, a vacuum or um, double-sided tape. And so we can cut everything in one, one operation. But we do want to plan a little bit ahead on the similar features there in the TCOS 2. And that part is two-sided. And for both of these parts, we'll plan on having some sort of sacrificial aluminum plate that goes underneath it that we can drill these shallow holes through and that plate can also have registration features on it for the uh, TCOS 2 part. But let's uh, go through this and we want to program this part first because that will allow us to copy some toolpath that's identical between the two parts. Okay, so we're going to go to from design to manufacture mode and first of course we're going to create our setup. So we create a setup, and on the purposes of this, we're going to use, and we're going to go to the stock tab, and on our sides, we're going to put a half an inch of material. Right now, it thinks the sides <laughs> are in a different axis because of the way the gnome's pointed. So. If if you get a big block like that, that's okay. And our our top stock offset is going to be zero. Now, once we orientate the gnome, it'll make a little more sense. All right, so we go back to setup, and we need to orientate the z-axis vertical, which will determine what is top for machining purposes. So let's go to select z-axis plane and x-axis. So we'll select the top of the model to be our z-axis and our x-axis in my example is already in line. It's pointing the wrong direction but it's in line with what we want for this part. If it isn't you're going to click this arrow here by x-axis and we will select on the world coordinate system that follows in the x-axis. Mine already is. And then to flip the orientation we check the box that says flip x-axis. And again if you modeled your part in a different orientation than I did then you just need to play with these settings until you have the gnome oriented as shown on the image here. It may not fall in the center of the part. We're going to move that on the next step. So our next step is to pick on a stock box point. And it's somewhat arbitrary. It depends on how you want to set up. I'm going to mix things up a little bit on this part. I'm going to put it in front center. And it'll become clear why I do this in the TCOS 2 part. But for a single setup part, it's somewhat semantics. It's how you want to set up on the machine. We're pretty much done with these two tabs. Now we go on to post process. So this is the TCOS 1 part. So we're going to go 0, 1, and it's operation 1, or program 1. And we'll call this. In the prog uh, program command comment line, we're going to put operation one. 
and we want to set our work coordinate system as 1. Select OK. So we should have setup 1 over here. If it's not labeled setup 1 because you had to restart or something, rename it setup 1. And now we're going to start machining features. Generally, I start with, say, the shallowest features, features first, and any features that go through the part uh, would be after features that don't. Although we have holes here that align with a groove. Drill bits don't behave too well when they have an interrupted cut. So in this instance, I'm actually going to reverse that philosophy. And we're going to use our drill bits first, then establish the slots. That way the slot geometry doesn't influence where the hole goes. As I said, we want to think of ahead about the TCOS 2 assembly, which has all of these, these six threaded features are not threaded features in the other half. So I want to elect to do those as a separate drilling routines so that we can omit that for the TCOS 2 program. All the rest of our holes are three millimeters except for this larger hole here. The larger hole will use a circular interpolation so we can reduce the number of drill bits we use. So we're going to go to the drilling command and I'm going to select, I'm going to select the TCOS library and we're going to select tool number 20 for the three millimeter drill and then select OK. And it should put in RPMs, uh, 6,000 RPM, 8 inches a minute on the plunge rate. That might be a little slow for a 3 millimeter, but um, we'll run with that. Geometry-wise, we're going to select holes. Now, there are some nifty options here. There's uh, select same diameter. So if you select a single diameter, it'll select every hole of that diameter. It also, and when you do that, it, it sorts the holes with the most optimum spacing. So if you've used this before, it works pretty well. We're going to select the box. It gives you a few options um, for how to select the holes. And you can do just an area of the part if you have them clustered together. We're not going to set any of these other parameters because this is a small part and we don't have multiple holes at multiple heights. There. So we'll select one of our three millimeter holes and it should select all of them that they're the same size. So I've got all of our three millimeter through holes and as you can see it's going in a fairly efficient pattern to catch all of those. It ignores the M3s because that's actually a different size hole and it's threaded. Alright, the next uh, box we're going to go to is heights. Now because our stock height is the same height as our material, we don't need to worry about having stock or model selected here. It's kind of semantics. The default for the drilling cycle is to go from the modeled hole top to the modeled hole bottom. Now we need to be careful because we have a couple of these holes down inside the track and it looks like it's still processing as if the hole is at the top of the material, so we're okay. But if you had issues with that where it actually starts the drilling down here, because that's where the hole is starting, you would want to use model top for this option right here. If I select it right now, it's, it's going to give me the same result then at the moment. Now the bottom hole treatment is something you want to look at. If we look at the side of this, you notice that the drill point is going to the bottom of the hole. So we're not actually drilling through the material. It's going, taking the tip of the tool and going to the bottom of the hole. So we need to select this drill tip through bottom. And this is where it's critical that when you're setting up your drill bits that the angle that you set in your tool library matches the actual tool you're putting in the machine. So a standard drill bit like you get at the hardware store has a 118 degree tip, but some of the high performance carbide, they'll have 
different uh, tip angle here. So the distance from tip to the shoulder of the drill calculate differently based off what's in your tool library. Now this theoretically goes all the way through, but if our material runs a little bit thick or our tool's not set exactly accurately, you're going to end up with it possibly not cutting all the way through. So we're going to add on to that breakthrough distance and put in a negative 0.02, which is going to add to the depth of how far we break through. Now it's not a negative uh, number because it's adding to this drip uh, drill tip through bottom. Uh, there's also the offset. Um, that would have to go into a negative value if you were to use that instead. All right. We're going to the next tab, which is the type of drilling cycle we want to do. And it's defaulting for drilling. Now, the default drilling outputs a code that tells the machine to drill at a feed rate and just retract. It's going to go through and just do one pass at it. This is fairly thin material, so it, it probably could handle that. But you get a better finish in these ductile materials if you do a peck where you're making the hole incrementally. And a few of these holes, it's pretty important that they're accurate to where their location is for the steam engine to function. I believe the cylinders pivot back and forth and have to line up with some of these holes depending on what angle it's at. So we're going to use deep hole drilling, what's called deep hole drilling in this software. Other software just calls it a peck drill, but it pecks at the material. It works really well in soft, free machining materials. It rakes the chip back out. So we want to set our peck depth, and I think 0.03, 30 thousandths is, is good. And we don't need to reduce the peck depth. And our minimum peck is going to be 30 thousandths. And we don't need a dwell. That would be a stopping period where the drill bit pauses for a few minutes, a few seconds, however much time you allocate there. And we're going to select OK. So we're probably only going to get, you know, a couple pecks to go through the material. Okay, we're done with that routine. Now we're going to move on. And we're going to now establish these threaded holes that you see here. So we're going to go back to the drilling command. And then we need to select, we're going to select from the T-Codes library, tool number 18, which is the M3 tap drill. And then select OK. And your RPMs, I've got 6,008 for feed rate. We're going to go to geometry and we're going to select one of the threaded holes. And then we check the same diameter box and it should grab all the holes of that same diameter. And we'll skip over all the other options on this page. And then we'll go to heights. We can leave all these at default except for the uh, hole bottom, the end condition. We do want to break through with the tip and we want to leave a lot of room for our tap to come in and have clearance to push chips all the way through the part. So I'm going to put a hundred thousandths as an extra depth and that's going to cut through the part by a hundred thousandths and into the sacrificial plate that we have mounted underneath the part. And then we'll move on to our heights, our drilling type here, and we're going to use the same deep drill, deep drilling option, which is the peck drill. Uh, this drill is not a great difference in diameter size different than the last one. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, same numbers there. So our peck depth is going to be 30 thou with a minimum peck of 30 thou. And we leave everything else at default. And I'm going to hit OK. All right. So now we've done our tap drilling. 
let's move on to a another drilling cycle to, to tap those holes. Select the TCOS library, select the tool 19, which is a three millimeter tap, and then select OK. And we'll leave the default at 500 RPM. I don't like to go very fast with uh, threaded features, especially when you break through parts. Our geometry is going to be the same threaded hole we picked for the drilling cycle. And we select same diameter, which should get them all, and it should do them all in the same sequence. And now we're going to move to heights. We're going to leave all of this at default except for hole bottom. We want to check the breakthrough, and we don't want to go as deep as we did with the drill. So we're going to go 20 thousandths through extra. And now we go to the cycle, and it's going to be tapping. And we want to change this to right hand tapping to force it to do right hand tapping. And hit OK. And we've got our threaded features now. Now what we have left the machine is this larger hole, the slot, and the outside perimeter. The slot is three millimeters wide. It's too big for an eighth inch. This hole is a little bit larger. It can be cut with an eighth inch. In the outside perimeter, we're going to cut with an eighth inch, which is slightly bigger than three millimeters. So I suggest what we do is we first cut these two slots with a 16th end mill. And then when those are established, we come through and make this hole. And with that same tool without doing a tool change, it'll cut through the perimeter and release the part from the material with a little bit of flash still holding it to the material so it doesn't move. So here we go. We're going to go 2D, we're going to do a 2D pocket, you're going to select this, we're going to go to the TCOS library, we're going to select tool number 5 for a 16th, flat, 16th inch flat end mill. Select OK. I think we're going 4,000, we could bump that up to 5, let's bump that up to 5,000. 5,000, I like round numbers, so seven inches a minute. And then four. We're gonna move on to geometry. We're actually gonna select the top. So we've selected the geometry at the top of the slot. We wanna look down, make sure the arrows are within the slots, which they are in my case. If they aren't, click on the arrow to put it on the opposite side of the line. And then we're going to go to heights. Now our heights are going to have to be set differently than we have before. So our stock top's fine. Our top height for feed height's fine. But the and the top height of our cut is fine. But our bottom height is not the selected contours. What we want to do is you can either punch in the value of, neg of uh, 1.5 millimeters or we can come back and do selection. So we're going to pick selection. And then this allows you to pick the floor of the pocket to set the depth. You only have to set one of them. And we hit OK. Or I'm sorry, then we go to the next step. For passes. So our, our routine is going to cut from the height of this profile down to the selected surface. Okay, four thousandths left, climb cuts good. We do want finishing passes. We want one finishing pass. And for the step over, we're going to set that at five thousandths. Uh, we're going to leave all of these others at default, except for we're going to check, use more spiral, creates a more efficient tool path. 
It avoids sudden changes in direction. And this smoothing direction is for the roughing. We can leave that at four tenths. Yes, we want multiple depths. We want a mul multiple roughing step down of 0 0.02 or 20 thousandths. We'll do one finishing step down and we're going to leave five thousandths for that step down to remove. We should have a millimeter and a half of flute, so we'll finish only at final depth. We will rough the final and we're going to use even step downs. Okay, we can minimize all of that. We don't need any of those parameters. We do not want to leave stock, so we're going to do our roughing and finishing with one routine. So we need to deselect stock to leave, and we do want to select smoothing. And we want that at four tenths smoothing deviation. Now, if we look back up here, when we added the finish pass, it added compensation type. We don't want to leave it at computer. We want to change that to where. That gives the operator the ability to go in and make adjustments at the machine off based off the where or the diameter of the tool. All right, moving on to the next tab, we have all of these boxes above this line. We're going to leave it default. And we want our lead in. We want to lead out. We'll leave those at default, except for vertical lead in radius. We don't need that. Okay, ramp type. This is how it's going to enter the work. Currently, the slot we're cutting doesn't have enough room for a helix of this type. So let's change our plunge type to a zigzag profile and it's going to zigzag back and forth as it enters the work. The parameter is the ramp clearance height. We've left a full hundred thousandths. This plate is only a hundred and twenty five thousandths thick. So that's in proportion to what we're cutting. That's that's almost the thickness of the material we're cutting. Let's bump that down to 10 thousandths and see what happens. So now it starts its plunge 10 thousandths above the work and isn't wasting all those moves. And then it enters the work in an angle. So between each of these steps, it's moving in a zigzag fashion. Inside the slot, we have it cutting a series of rough cuts. And when it gets to the bottom, it finish cuts the rest. All right, we're done with that routine. Now let's cut this circular hole here. We're going to go to 2D. And we're going to do a 2D contour. And we're going to select the bottom of that feature. Make sure the arrow's on the inside of the hole, as shown. And we're going to go to our tool library. We're going to select the TCOS library, and then we're going to select tool number 17, which is the eighth inch flat end mill. And select OK. RPMs and feeds and speeds should auto populate. I'm just changing the one that I forgot to set when I set my library. And then we move on to our heights tab. We can leave all of this stuff at default but we do want to cut a little bit through deeper for flash. So let's go uh, negative 0 0.01 or 10 thousandths, and it'll go a little bit deeper and cut through that hole. We're going to go to passes. Coming down the menus, we want to go from in computer and where on compensation type. And then we can zoom on down to roughing passes. Okay, we want a roughing pass maximum step over of 80% of the diameter, which out, works out as 0.1 for an eighth inch end mill. Leave the smoothing deviation alone, and the number of step downs will leave at one. Okay, multiple depths. We're going to do 40 thousandths. 
step depth. We're going to leave a finishing step down, and that will be at 0.01. Now, just I realized that I neglected to have you set the step over. Once you select the roughing passes, this box appears up here for step over, and we want 0.01. We want it to match. And this is a small feature, so we don't have a lot of room for that cutter to move around in. Okay, so we're going to finish at final depth. We're going to rough the final depth, and we're going to use even step downs. We don't want to leave the stock to leave, but we do want to select the smoothing. All right, moving on to the next step, we have the linking tab. Everything up here stays at default. Our horizontal lead-in radius, let's leave it at default and see what happens. Sweep angle 90. Linear default, we'll leave it default, and we're going to put zero on our vertical lead-in radius. And we'll select OK. All right, looks like it did a pretty good job. Did a couple roughing passes, a few roughing passes, and then a finished pass at final. And it should have gone about 10,000 through the workpiece. Okay. All right, now our last routine is to use the same tool to contour around the outside of the part. Because we're using the same tool, we can use the same parameters. You can right click on it and say duplicate. It'll make a duplicate and we'll highlight that tool. And we're going to do edit. Okay, everything on the first tab stays the same. The geometry changes. We're going to select here in the front, go all the way around the part, we go to heights. We're going to leave all this at default except for the last box. Instead of taking off an extra 10 thousandths, we want to leave 10. Okay, and that'll leave flash around the outside. That we hopefully can just break through like foil when we deburr. Okay, we're going to go to the passes tab. All this stays at default. We go to the linking tab. All this is going to stay at default. The only, the only exception is I want to choose where we're going to start our cut. I want to make sure it's in front where the operator can see. So we're going to make our entry position. We're going to select the icon here and we're going to pick this corner. And that will force the plunge to be there and also start off on a radial cut. Now let's select OK. And we got our lead ins and whatnot. And we're leaving about 10,000 at the bottom. Okay, so let's simulate uh, what we've done so far. We've pretty much finished programming the part, but let's simulate it. Highlight the entire setup and pick the simulate icon. Make sure the stock is visible. And let's hit play. M3 through holes. These are the tap drill holes for the M3s. Now it's tapping the M3s. And now our 16th end mill is coming in and cutting the slot. Now I'm going to hide the holder here.
Okay, so we finished machining this part. And you can see everything goes through that's supposed to, except for the outside perimeter, has a real thin flash. Okay, so this uh, concludes the programming portion. Okay, before we want to close out this file, we want to go through and label what these operations do. We have three drilling cycles, a pocket, and two contours. Especially if we're going to copy these routines to another part, like to TCOS 2. So our tool 20 is that drilling cycle is doing the M3 clearance holes. The uh, next routine is doing M3 tap drill. The next cycle is actually the tapping. M3 threads or tap. The pocket is pocketing the slots. Okay, and then the 2D contour here is just contouring a bore. And the final contour is doing outside profile. All right, well, my uh, OCD is going to come back and make these things a little more consistent in how I labeled them by putting the dashes in and taking out the numbers. Because they might be in a different order once we copy them to another program. Okay, so we have better descriptions of what each of these things are doing. Of course, you need to do, you need to post process this and do a setup sheet. When you do your setup sheet, make sure the model is shown in an orientation like it would be on the machine so that it shows up in your setup sheet. You need to upload one setup sheet and one program to complete this assignment on Canvas. So it's two files. All right. I'll segue right into the TCOS 2 part and we'll program that similar part and during that process we're going to leverage some of the programming you've done here. See you on the next one.